Welcome everybody to Hungry for Hebrew. This is the Torah portion series, and we're currently in Korach, uh, which is number 16 through 18. Mm -hmm. If you want to raise your hand or annotate on the screen, here's how you do it. And this reading is fantastic because it jumps right into an interesting story. No uh, kind of boring stuff to get through first. No, it jumps right into the story of Korach. Mm -hmm. If you all remember, Korach was challenging Moses. He's like, we're all holy. Why do you think that you're holier than the rest of us? So here we go. Thomas, you get to start us find off. Out. Yeah. Vaikach. <clears throat> Um, Korach, uh, Korach ben Yitzhar ben Hahat, ne, sorry, Pehat ben Levi. Uh, sometimes very difficult to read. Okay, Levi. Veda, Vedatan Vaaviram benei Eliav ve on ben. Pelet bene veuven 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 very good yeah you're right it is hard to read sometimes <laughs> when this like a cantillation mark here is shoving yeah. the vowel over so you have yeah. to figure oh yeah so that means it's mm -hmm. dividing right here there's a tzere under the lamed a chirik right there but it got shoved over because of that cantillation mark uh, yeah. pretty much the same thing happens with other cantillation marks this one shoves the tzere over so does that one. So does that yeah. one. It's a very difficult font. Um, okay, is there a, is a reading pause? The first one, the double point, yes? Yeah. Is the, the reading, reading what? Uh, as a pause. Pause. There's a... The, well, the, I mean, the if first you, one? Um, well, if you're asking about which level of disjuncting cantillation mark, here's your halfway point. Yeah, uh, that's a no, put comma. one right there as well. And we're going to nail another. Uh, we could probably put one right there. The one then put it in. Yes. Yeah, so that's where I would put it. Okay, okay. One here, one there. Uh, is this a there. phrase? A phrase? Uh, between the cantillation marks or not? Uh, the uh, uh, Rabbi Peterman say that we learn, it's better uh, learn Hebrew in phrases. Oh, absolutely. I, I would yeah, agree. Yeah. I would agree with cutting up the verse into logical units yeah and so you can kind of wrestle a big verse little bits at a time but it's still a complete mm -hmm. thought so yeah mm -hmm. I, I i would agree with anyone who says that uh, korach, that's a complete sentence korach took mm. so, korach who ben yitzhar ben kahat ben levi so this is telling us more information about this guy korach I can make a better error. There we go. Vedatan the Aviram Bene Eliav the On Ben Pelet Bene Reuven. Okay, so we've pretty much got the pedigree of this guy, uh, Korach, and apparently Datan the Aviram are also in on um on the the taking. Now, what is it that he's taking? I guess we might have to go to the next verse. What did he take and what did he do? Who's the next reader? Nadiva, did you did you help? Is this one yours to read? Go ahead. Your microphone, can you turn it on? Sorry, I there lost my mouse for a minute. Veya Veyaku Mu Lifne Moshe. Be a she oh ben be anashim mo ne mobne be setra el be israel. I'm sorry, but I'm sorry, keep going. Ha ha me. Mimosh Mishim Uma Tam Time Ne Se E Ada or Ed Ida 
Create create more ed and she shem. Very good. Vayakumu lifne moshe va anashim mi bne yisrael chamishim umatayim nisi e eda kriye moed anshe shem. All right, so they rose up before Moses. Uh, the guys that we just read about in the previous verse, they rose up before Moses. Uh, what's the root of the word vayakumo? Um, kum. Ikra? Kum. Kum. Kum, to rise up. So we, yeah, yeah. We, we're missing a vav here, but there is a vowel vestige of that missing uh, vav. Lifne uh, Moshe before the face of Moses. Va Anashim Mibne Israel and men of the sons of Israel. Now you can see that the translation included certain <clears throat> men, mm. the sons of Israel. Chamishim uh, Umatayim. Here is a number. How many was it? Chamishim. Chamesh is five. Chamishim is fifty. Mea is a hundred. Put it in the dual form matayim, it becomes two hundred. Remember that ayim is the dual suffix. What other words have a dual suffix that you can think ayin. of? Ayin. Ayin. Mm -hmm. ayin, ayin is an i, a nayim, two eyes. Yad, yadayim. Ozen, oznayim. Ketef, tafayim, shoulders. Um, so most anything that comes in pairs on the body will be pluralized with this dual suffix. You can also do, you can also have units of measure or certain numbers that end like this one that end in the dual. Uh, what about the number shtayim or shnayim, oh. feminine or masculine too, also has a dual suffix. Uh, all right, nisi e eda, nasi is a prince or leader or um, mm -hmm. governor here it's in the construct princes or governors or leaders of Eda, the assembly who leads an assembly someone with a good enough reputation for everyone to say yeah we'll follow after what that guy says it's from nasa to lift mm -hmm. yeah, nasa to, lift. to lift right one, one that is liftable or promotable yeah, yeah. someone who can mm -hmm. lead the con congregation Kriye moed. Kriye would be those who are able to call an assembly together. Again, so it has to be somebody of some sort of repute. Otherwise, you would just be like, who called the meeting? Him? Uh -huh. And then in case we didn't get it, there's also these last two words here. Anshe Shem. Men of name. Oh, doesn't every man have a name? Well, no, that's the point is that it's it's renown. It's a reputation, men of reputation. Oh. Shem, name, is more than just what you call someone. It's their reputation. Mm -hmm. All right, Jesse, you're the next reader. Go ahead. Okay. Vaikahalu al Moshe ve al Aharon Va yomeru elechem rav lachem ki kol haeda kulam kedo shim uv tochem adonai umadua tit na su al Adonai. Mm -hmm. Very good. Vayika halu al Moshe the al Aharon. Because of that, I'll put a comma there. Vayomeru alehem. Here's where the quote starts. Rav lachem. 
כי כל העדה כולם קדושים, ובתוכם אדוני. ומדוע התנשאו על קהל אדוני? Because of this word מדוע, uh, I know that this must be a question, because מדוע is a question word. Um, מדוע is another word for why. It's probably a combination of מה and ידוע, uh, which isn't, it doesn't come across very clearly. It's more like an idiom, but uh, what is known becomes the, que the, the question word, why? Uh, yeah, um, yeah, that one, yeah. kahalu. Uh, what's the root? Vaikahalu? Uh, oh, yeah, yes. Um, kahal. Kahal. And what's the, what's the verbal binyan? There are seven binyanim. Which one is this? You can tell by the vowels and dagesh and... Vaikahalu. Okay, good. Vayiktol is the form, and that is correct. It is a Vayiktol form, which tells us it's narrative past. And we can tell that because of the Vav, the Patach, and the Dagesh. We can also see the Yiktol prefix is Yod here with an U there. So who's the subject? They. They, exactly. They. They. Must... But that's not the question I originally asked. There are seven binyanim. There's kal, nifal, pl, pu'al, hifil, hufal, hitpael. Those are the seven binyanim. And I understand most people, some people haven't studied those yet. But of those of you who have studied them, which of the seven binyanim does this verb belong to? Kal. Kal. No. I'll give you a hint. Well. I'll give you a hint. Nifal. 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 That anything like a donkey let the donkey remind you of nifal so this <laughs> er is the first thing that should make us go up oh, i wonder if it's nifal and then we get a strong dagesh in the kuf which mm -hmm. confirms our suspicion why is there a dagesh here in nifal verbs that are in the yiktol or vayiktol there's a noon missing the noon of Nifal. It's precisely the noon that tells us what binyan this is. It went missing. Oh, good glory. Precisely the letter we need to know it in order to diagnose it has assimilated. Ha! Ah, for crying out loud. But yes, so the <laughs> ea is what you're looking for generally in Nifal verbs. In the Katal forms, they'll show up like uh, Nikhal. Nikhal or Nifal or Nishmar, something like that. It still has the E-A sound, but in Yiktol and Vayiktol, you get this kind of triad of uh, indicators. E-A and a strong Dagesh. Okay, good. So Nifal, what does it tell us? What does it mean? What does it add to the meaning of this word? No, no, Reflection. don't be passive. It's, it's reflexive. <laughs> okay, good. So it can either be passive or reflexive, depending on which verb it is. Turns out there used to be two different binyanim, one that was passive and one that was reflexive. The passive one fell out of use, and now nifal covers both of them. So now you have to kind of um, figure out from context which one it is. Passive, in case anyone doesn't know, means that the subject is receiving the action of the verb. Not doing it, but receiving the action of the verb. So here we have the, the root word kuf he lamed, which is to congregate. But because it's passive, it's not that they gathered people together, but rather that they were gathered. And then if it's a reflexive, then it means that they did it to themselves. The people gathered themselves together. Now you can see that this translator decided for option number two. It's reflexive. As a reflexive, absolutely. But let's not discount the possibility of it just being passive. What if somebody called out to all these people to gather together? Then that means they were gathered together. So which one is it, passive or reflexive? 
figure out from the context what what's best. There may not be a right answer. Both could be possible. And that's really frustrating with Nifal. Okay. Vayi kahalu, and they were gathered, or and they gathered themselves. Al Moshe. On mm -hmm. Moses. Well, probably like against Moses. Concerning Moses. The Al Aharon. Oh, and against his brother Aaron. Vayomru, and they said Alehem to them. Rav Lachem. What's Rav? Too much. Yeah. Or a lot. Yeah, or a lot. lot. Abundance. A lot. Abundance. Much, many. Exactly. So when you say Rav Lachem, it's much for you all. In fact, too much for you all is how we'd probably put it into English. Ki chol ha'eda kulam kedoshim. Because all of the congregation that has the same testimony, ed, or ud, eh, kulam, all of them, this is the word kol with a suffix that means all of them, all of them are implied verb, nominal sentence, kadoshim. What are they? All? Holy. Mm -hmm. Kadosh. Or the whole, or the holy ones. Um, separated, here it has separated to be, apart. Here it has to be a uh, an adjective. Um, the the usual form of the adjective would be kadosh, but because of the mm -hmm. im and the shift of the accent, that's going to cause this kamatz to drop to a shva in an open, unstressed syllable, kadoshim. So everyone is okay. adjective holy. Set apart, consecrated, or at least. Why has the kolim got this? Why is it not kolim and it's kulim? Mm -hmm. Why is it kulam instead of kol? Yeah, kulam. Yes. It, it actually has more to do with the original uh, vowel in the word kol. We think of the word kol as having an o vowel, like this kamatkatan right here. Yeah. Or as having a cholam like this. Yeah. And but it turns out that there was originally no o vowel in Hebrew. Okay. There were ah vowels, e vowels, and u vowels. And the u vowel is the one that changes over to an o sound. Uh, I've presented this before. I'll quickly do it again. The e vowel is also what turns into our e vowels, like a tere. And then because of something called a Canaanite shift, we also see some ah kamatz vowels turning into an o. Uh, but o mm. wasn't original. U is, is actually the original vowel. Uh, let's see. Kol ha'eda, kulam kedoshim. All of them are holy. Uvetocham Adonai. So here's another nominal sentence with an implied verb to be, just like there was over here. Uh, and in the midst of them, right? And in the midst of them, implied is Yod -Heh -Vav -Heh, the Lord. He's among. All of these people, not just among, not just you guys. Umadua, Korach is finishing his question. Umadua, and why? Tit nasu. Okay, now you all should be able to see what's the root of this verb. Das, uh, no, so das, nasa. There's another verb, uh, another word with the root of nasa, which we said means to lift, bear, carry, um, possibly even rise up. And it's a hit it, What form? <clears throat> Very good. Uh, uh, the binyan is hit pael, <laughs> which we'll talk about momentarily. And the form is yiktol. Okay, because it's a yiktol, we're looking for a yiktol prefix and possibly a suffix too. So who's the built in subject? They. If there's a tav at the front. There's a tav, um, tav at the uh, front. Ooh, at the you. end. You, second person. Mm -hmm. uh, a plural. Masculine plural. So you Masculine, all. Yeah. And it makes sense because he's talking to Moses and his brother. Mm -hmm. you all masculine mm -hmm. plural. And you. then you said it was a hit pa el verb. That's the binyan. Mm -hmm. What's the meaning of a hit pa el uh, flavored verb? Reflexive, what? reciprocal. 
Mm -hmm. Kind of like the uh, kind of like the knee fall or half of the job of knee fall that we saw earlier. It's either something someone does to himself or something he's doing with someone else, uh, which is called either uh, reflexive, do it to yourself or reciprocal, doing it with someone else. Well, if the root is to lift up, does it make more sense to translate this as you and Mo uh, Moses and Aaron, you two are lifting each other up or both of you are doing the action of raising yourselves up? Reflexive or reciprocal? I'd say reciprocal. Lift yourselves up. Okay, lift yourselves up is reflexive. Um, doing it to yourself. It's just that Moses... Or lift each other up. up. Well, okay, that would be it's reflexive. Like rise above. Right. Like rise above this. Right. Um, I would I would opt more with the reflexive because uh, mm -hmm. I guess they're raised... Uh, in Korach's estimation, Moses and Aaron are lifting themselves up above the rest of the congregation. Oh, by the way, God called them by name, but I digress. And so he's uh, all sour because Moses and Aaron are lifting themselves up and because of this extra, uh, this extra syllable right here, and because of the ah vowel and the dagesh. That's how we know that it's hit pa el, reflexive or reciprocal. It's also got a nagesh there. We know that means it's a doubling binyan, usually a more intensive action. And it's not just like, oh, let me do this action. It's like I'm focusing, I'm trying to uh, do it intensively or even repeatedly, uh, the action of lifting up. Why are you all lifting yourselves up al-kahal adonai, above or against there's that uh, that root again, kuf he lamed, but now it's a noun in construct, the congregation of the Lord. For all of you Greek gurus, what's the Greek word that's usually translated from this Hebrew word kahal? Ecclesia. E Ecclesia. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's why when you look in the book of Hebrews, uh, it talks about the... Uh, the ecclesia that was in uh, the desert at Mount Sinai, the New Testament usually translates ecclesia as church in virtually every place in the um, every place in the New Testament, with to my knowledge, with the exception of three places. Mm -hmm. One has to do with here because that's before the church existed. Well, still the same word. And then another two where the people were gathering. What was it? Oh, it can also be a, um, a secular congregation. Like if the people are gathering together, uh, but you, but the context demands that they are not, you know, like uh, new Testament believers, then I could be wrong. It may, it may not be three places, but it's interesting to see how one word can be translated the same way, except for, you know, just a couple places here or there. Those are really interesting to me. Okay. All right. Next. Uh, I have a question. Yes, question. Okay. I uh, see um, a cantillation mark that is a orthogonal line. What is that? In the text. You said under the line? Uh, here. In this, a vertical line. Yeah, a uh, vertical line. Yes, yes, yes. Ah, okay. Um, usually the vertical. I don't know line... what it is. It says you... a. Right. Okay. So usually the vertical line is going to be in conjunction with another cantillation mark. Uh, ah. Okay. Okay. Which okay. one it is? Of course. I'm it's not... like a comma. It's like a pause to when we read. Yeah. Oh, come on, where are you? Here we go. Like in Adonai, in the, at the end of the verse? Is that what you're talking about? No, no, not the... No, not no, no, it's... Little, a, yeah. Met, yeah, that's a short little um, meteg. He's talking about one yes, that's full height. And I want to show right. you all. Let me see if I can share. Come on, how do I do this? New share. 
Oh, that's what I'm going to do. There it is. What I'm going to do is share a uh, page out of my Clumash with you all so that you can see. What this looks like. Oop, one more. Oh, that's not it. What am I doing wrong? Ah, there we go. There it is. All right, now let's move this over to here. Uh, if oh. any of you has a chumash, a uh, ah. a new a, a a a books of Moses first five ah, books yes. Pentateuch, there might be a page in the front that um, shows you all the cancellation marks and the name of them. So mm. that little thing is called Kadma. Munach, Zarka, Munach, Segol, Munach. Wait a second. There's ah, the yes, yes. line. So you can see that we've seen oh, Munach, you know, here, there, there. But it looks like this combination is slightly different than regular Munach, which is that little backwards capital L. Here it's working together with that. Now, exactly how much you need to pause, that's a great question. You can see there's another one down here uh, with the, um, wait a second, seek. The same root word is, yeah. Uh, so, there's another one here with shalshelet. So all I mean to say is this is what it looks like. I wish I could give you a better answer as to whether it says to pause or not pause or something like that. Um, my first instinct would be that, yeah, you should probably have a little bit more of a pause there than not. Uh, but just wanted to show it, and hopefully that helps. Uh, any questions on this? Um, get back to where I was. Where was I? Oh, for Pete's sake. There it is. All right, we're back. All right, who is the next reader? Oh, that's going to be a teeny tiny verse. It's only going to be a couple of, what is it? One, two, three, four, five, five words. That's not going to be very much here. Is it working? Yeah, it's working. Who wants to read an itty bitty little verse? I'm not going to give that to anybody. It's too short. Vayishma Moshe Vayipol Alpanav. All right, Vayishma is a Vayiktol. Moshe did the action, narrative past, of Shama to hear. And Moses mm -hmm. heard Vayipol. Uh oh, I see it's a Vayiktol. I see there's a Yod, but I only see two root letters. What's the root of this verb? Nafal. Nafal. The noon is missing. <laughs> per no. usual, every yes. time noon comes at the end of a syllable, it goes missing into the following letters of Dagesh, unless it's a guttural. Vayipol should have been Vayinpol. Okay? Vayinpol is the hypothetical original form of this verb. But much like it does in English, if you put a noon at the end of the syllable, like in logical, the N will assimilate into the following letter and it becomes illogical. Same thing happens here. The noon assimilates into there and instead of vayinpol, it becomes vayipol with a doubled P. Alpanav, and he fell upon his panin face. face. That's got to hurt. Yeah. All right, who's my next reader? Shall I have a shot? Yeah, absolutely, sir. Go ahead. Okay. Um, va taber el kara uh, kora ve um, el kol Adato, Adato, Lemur, 
occurs phi yada uh, yoda adonai el et asher lo um ve et hakadar kadosh mm -hmm. good ve hik ro hik hik ro reeve that's it combine those two together um reeve uh, um ala um ve et asher yif har vak rav riv vak kariv um el elav elav all right excellent va yidaber el korach ve'el kol adato le'mor. Now remember, when you see the word le'mor in the Bible, it's usually acting like a uh, quotation mark, right? There weren't quotation marks originally in the Bible. So when you see this, think, hmm, maybe oh, that's wow. the beginning of the quote. Boker ve'yoda Adonai et Asher lo ve et hakadosh ve hikriv elav ve et asher yivchar bo yakriv elav. All right, where can we split this up into shorter segments? Uh, I want to hear the Hebrew word of where I should put a comma after it. I've already put one right here because of the word le more. Where else can one go? Lo. Hello. Um, and um, ha, um, ha, ha, hik, hik I would put one before the word hikriv and yeah. because of this vowel yeah. right there. And because of that right there, it even looks kind of like a comma, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, it's called tipacha. Uh, it's usually a disjuncting mark. All right, next one. Elav. Um, Elav. That's your halfway Elav. point right there. Mm -hmm. Elav with the wishbone looking symbol. Like oh, this. Now, if we put one right there, does that mean we should put one right here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll go ahead and do it for the sake of consistency, yeah. but uh, we'll see how this um, this last bit is all part of one verse, but I mean, one idea, but it's still okay. It's um, We'll see why here in a minute. Vaidaber uh, el Korach. All right, and he spoke. Who did? Moshe, Moshe, probably Moshe, yeah, probably Moshe. El Korach to this presumptuous man Korach, the El Kol Adato, and to all <laughs> of his company or congregation or um, uh, Eda, right? We saw the word Eda earlier, a congregation. Here it's Adato, his congregation or his company. Lemor saying, Boker. Boker Tov. What's Boker? Morning. 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 Tomorrow morning or morning. Good. So you can see here how that the translator said, it, it, he translated it as an adverb. Okay. Tomorrow morning. Literally, it's morning. But here they're calling it tomorrow. Um, which brings up an inter interesting point. In Judaism, where's the beginning of the day? In the evening. At the evening. What at if that's... Korach came to Moshe in the evening? Would that be? Would that then be considered tomorrow? No. Yeah. No. Yes, yeah. it would be. It yeah. would be. No. Well, no. no but, morning wouldn't but, be. 
if yeah, but morning. Not the be, morning, but not the well, morning. Right. It would be so, tomorrow, but it wouldn't be the morning. It would be. It would be in. The, it would be on the morrow, which is where we get mm -hmm. the word tomorrow from. Yes. Morrow is the sunrise. So boker should be translated as the morrow, uh, but we don't use that word anymore. Uh, so let's call it morning. <laughs> Veyoda, <laughs> uh, wait a second. What's the root of this it's word? It's like no to know. It is. Yes. It's no, no. But the but the form of it. What's going on with the form of it? So by a peel. Peel has an O in it. Okay. So, is it imperative cool. or it's a participle it's a bird it's a plane it's superman <laughs> <laughs> what is going on with this crazy thing okay so it's not a vayaktol because a vayaktol should have a vav patach uh, and this does not yeah, that... um is it a <sighs> let's see is it a is it a participle? No, it's not. Good. Why? Um because um just where it's placed in the sentence. I agree. It's not the context doesn't exactly. It's not part it. it's not part of the morning. Right. It's not part of if we were to expect the normal form of the participle, which is in modern Hebrew, the present tense, it would be yodea. Ani yodea, I know. At yodaat, you know. That's yoda, it's not the same. Looks like something else is going on here. All right. What if that could be a yiktol prefix? Then what? We know that the root is yod dalit ayin, so we're very tempted to make that yod part of the root. But what if it's not? Is it hevel? Very good. What's the original root? It's not yod dalit ayin, it's vav dalit ayin. And then the yod here is your yiktol prefix. What should have originally been in the he field should have originally been yao. Yeah. Dia. Ugh, that's hard to say. Yao dia. So what happened here is that the yao is something called a diphthong. It's when you have multiple vowel sounds right next to each other, and Hebrew likes to simplify them. So it turns yao, original W sound for the vav, it turns that into yo. Yo. And then dia, because of the ayin, uh, rather than having the yod, the chiric yod, it's going to be the, um, well, I don't want to say it like that. How do I say this? This is a jussive form. Does anyone know what jussive means? Jussive. It's a form is, of an imperative. Very good. If If you can imagine a third person imperative. Let him do such and such. That's what this is. And the reason I know is because the verb has been crunched short. It's been apocopated. Ah. Instead of being yodia, it's yoda. Where did the yod go? Where did the chiric yod go? It's gone. It's been squished away. It's been apocopated. The jussives like to shorten the form, meaning if they have a mater lectionis letter, they'll lose it. That's what we're looking at here. A he feel justif. Let him cause to know. Let him inform. Let him show or demonstrate that is the Lord et asher lo. Make known what? Et answers the question. What's being made known? Asher starts an independent clause. In lo in some strange shape or form has to be a complete sentence because after a share, we should get a phrase, which is a complete idea. So we need to apply, uh, supply the verb. 
is the one that or who is, is him, meaning belonging him. to him. Let God demonstrate who belongs to him. The et, oh, something else that's going to be the object of this verb. And let him also show, demonstrate, or make known et hakadosh, the holy one. One. So this is a mm -hmm. an adjective, kadosh. So either we have to have a holy something or we'll just use the implied holy one. Like who's the holy one around here? Vehikriv. What's the root? Hara. Karav. Karav. Karav is to be close. Hikriv, he feel, means cause something to be close. Vehikriv, and he will cause to come near. Elav, unto him. That's what the Bab is for, him. Ve'et asher yivchar bo. So, uh, he will cause to come to close to him. Uh, is that, wait a second, is that referring back to these? Et asher lo ve'et akadosh ve'hikriv elav? Who's the, who's the direct object of this verb? Who's receiving the action of being drawn close? These guys the holy are... Ones. Okay. Yeah. I would tend to agree because there's a hard disjuncting etnachta here, which means everything oh. before it belongs together and everything after it belongs together, mm. no mixing across that line. Ah, okay. So it's a little backwards here, but we have the direct object marker and therefore the direct object right here. And then the verb right there, and the built-in subject, of course. Uh, yod is he, so subject and verb. Elav is the indirect object. Um, the thing that is the direct object, where is it going? Elav, unto him. So this is your indirect object. Learning all kinds of things about grammar today, huh? Hmm. So can this, I... This sentence is backwards in that the object comes first, then the subject verb, then the indirect object. In English, we usually like to put the subject, then the verb, then possibly the indirect, then the direct. Go ahead, Tim. Yeah, if I can just add my esoteric input on the interpretation. So you, you were talking about um, the darkness. There's two types of darkness. So the one you see with your eyes, according to the Kumash, um, one you see with your eyes and the other you see with your mind and your heart. So Korah is the priest coming before. The Lord will, as we know in this story, the Lord decides. Mo Moses says, come tomorrow. Um, I might be getting ahead of the story, but um, from Bocher uh, Yivoda Adonai, from right to left, he's coming before the Lord in darkness in mind and heart. Um, but the Lord's going to change him, as we see, as you're putting this in context towards the end. When he comes before, it's going to go from it goes from right to left, and then it goes back from left to right, because he's going to show them. The Lord is going to show Korah who's right, and what is holy, and what is light. I know it sounds esoteric, but it does. You're you're in a you're in a different plane than I am. Thank you for okay. sharing. All right, the next one is another itty bitty verse. Who wants an itty bitty verse? Me. Eileen, go ahead. Zot. 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 Shevo. Asu. Asu. Rek. No. Go. Ka et o kehu al ka em la chem la chem me et me. 
Mehetaet. We have two close syllables. Mach. Mach. Mato. Mach. Tot. Mach. Tot. Ko. Ach. Ve. Kol. A. Deot. Adato. 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 Zot asu. Kahu lachem machtot. Korach vechol adato. So this is still Moses speaking. There's the halfway point with the etnachta. <laughs> the halfway point is two words in. <laughs> Zot asu. Feminine this. Asu. What is this? It's. It's. The, the verb as asa. Mm -hmm. We know this verb as asa. He did or made. But what form is what form is in this verse? It's an imperative. Mm -hmm. Because of the reduced vowel right there, we know that it's an imperative, and because of the hey. u right there, we know that it's plural. You guys. All right, guys, hey. do this. Kahu, there's another one, reduced. U, you all will. Uh oh, I only have two root letters. What's the root? A cock. Mm -hmm. The first root letter, Lamed, is missing. Lakach, take lachem for yourselves. Machtot. Sensors. What is a sensor? A thing that put, you put incense in to burn. Mm hmm. Exactly. It's been about, it's been about, it's been about sometimes. Exactly. And get the smoke to waft around, right? Yeah. Korach. Korach. Vechol adota. Uh, excuse me. Adato. Adato. Where's that? Ada or Eda. Again, the congregation that has the same testimony. Is an Eda, so Adato, his congregation that has the same testimony. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. And the, uh, <clears throat> the vowel U, it's a word, who is it this third person? Not right, second. You're thinking, you're, thinking of the, you're thinking of the Katal yeah. suffix, the third common plural suffix yeah. is, is U. U. That is correct. So, for example, they guarded. But you re. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, that is correct. Now, yeah, but the Yiktol yeah. to MP ah, yes. would have Tavik. It's Yiktol. Okay, so. Okay. Thank you. No, no mm. it's not. It's not Yiktol. No, no. It's not no? Yiktol. No. So we're going to put a tav at the front and an u at the ah. end, and we would get tish maru. But tish. then when you want to make tish. the imperative, imperative. So that's when you wrap ah, off the yes. tav and you're left with an u Thank at the you. end. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thanks. Because, so, yeah, yeah. because this is missing a lamet at the front, yes. we don't mm. really see this, all we get is a shva. Thank you. This one over here, we should have had yeah, three yeah. letters as well, but there's a missing yoga. Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. That makes right. a lot of sense. Now we're back to the long verses. Who's the next reader? I can. Uh, no, okay. uh, Jesse. Jesse, you have your hand up. Go ahead. Oh. Ut nu vahen esh ve simu. Alehen Ketoret Lifne Adonai Mahar Vehaya Ha Esh Asher Yivhar Adonai Hu Ha Kadosh Rav Lachem Ne Levi. Very good. Um... The vowels are all squished together here. You want to give that a second try reading? Ah, uh, but ha'ish. Ha'ish, exactly. All right. Um, 
there was a question that I had. Ah, this one right here. How do I know where the stress ought to be? How do I know that it should go here? Hmm. Does it stick at all? As a dot under the shin. It's not a vicatol. It's not a vicatol? Even if it were a vicatol, that wouldn't tell us where the stress is unless it were first common singular or second masculine singular. Mm -hmm. But no, it's not a vicatol. Okay, I'm sorry. A no, no, it's fine. A catal form of the word seem is going to yeah, lose yeah. that hollow root letter. It would be sam, like this, oh. like he is pudding. Yeah, okay. yeah he is pudding. Or how would you say she is pudding? She is sim. Sim a. Sama. Sama. Sama is masculine. Eh, sam mm. is masculine. As, ah yes Ooh, yes oh Sama. oh yeah okay oh, yeah yeah Sama. okay two root letter yeah yeah sorry okay now these are these are the participles but there are also catal forms mm. okay so those are the two uh singular participles sam and sama in the catal sam is also three ms mm. uh, yeah. and sama with the accent here would be the three FS. Very frustrating stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now there is a. Um, I want to share a quick story about a friend. Well, I can't say he's a friend, an acquaintance who was reading through some of the prophecies of the Bible, and found a place where the word ba shows up. What's the root of the word ba? Oh. Yeah, it's kind of yeah, like this, exactly. It's kind of like this word in that it has a a, a, a hollow root letter. Here yeah. it would be with a vav instead mm -hmm. of a yod, but vav and yod they're both kind of hollow letters, uh, the, uh, more like vowels than consonants. So they go bye bye. This word right here does it mean he is coming, or does it mean he he came? Mm -hmm. I, okay, he he came. He came. He came. You don't know. It's the same <laughs> word for both. It's the just same. Like, just it's like the same it was Some oh. can either be Come. putting or it can be he put. We don't know which one it is. Oh. So this acquaintance was mm. reading along. I think it was in, what was it, in Malachi, <laughs> talking about the, uh, the coming of Messiah or something like that. Mm. It says, he is coming, ah. but he read it as... He came. He came. Uh, and of mm. course, in the light of New Testament theology, this is absolutely powerful. Mm -hmm. He came rather than <laughs> he is coming. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, oh. So there's a hollow root right come. there. Because the hollow root letter is visible, it cannot be katal, and therefore it can't be vekatal. But rather, it has to be some sort of a yiktol or derivative. Well, it's not yiktol because there's no yiktol prefix. It's like it mm -hmm. got lopped off. So what are we looking at? Huh? What what yiktol form has a tav lopped off? Yeah. You just saw in the previous example. Just the question again. Imperative. Imperative. Imperative, Imperative. Imperative takes mm -hmm. the yiktol form, but then lops off that initial tav. Mm. So ta si mu yeah, yeah. with a tav lopped off becomes si mu. Mm. So how do I know that the stress is right here? What was the original question? Mm. It is an imperative. Mm. How can I know that the stress goes here? It's got a little magnifying glass or something at the end of it. Doesn't that mean it has final stress? Well, not quite because the beginning of the final syllable is right here on the mem. If I wanted to stress this syllable here, then I need a symbol above the mem. But ah. rather, but rather mm. this symbol always comes at the end of the word. So does ah. this one. It doesn't tell you where the stress is. Only a handful of cantillation marks do not tell you where the stress is. And here we have two of them. So back to my original question. How can I know that the stress goes here? Well, you could be an expert in biblical Hebrew, or you could find this word somewhere else in the Bible that has a different cantillation mark. 
That's one solution. Mm -hmm. What you'll learn is yeah. that these hollow roots like to have penultimate stress. So, you know, it's just something you tuck away in the uh, on the back burner or whatever. Uh, here's their stress. The simu. And you all put alehen upon them. Them. It, uh, sensors. Remember the sensors this. that we were talking about? And you shall put into them ketoret. You know, that's kind of hard to hard to see, but there is a holam right there. Mm. Uh, hiktil is to cause something to go up in smoke. So what is ktoret? Incense. The thing that goes up in smoke. Mm -hmm. Lif, lifne Adonai, before the presence of the Lord. Machar. Tomorrow. Now that's a good word for tomorrow. Vehaya. <laughs> what verbal form is this? Vehaya is um, past. Um, I shall. Not vayiktol. No yiktol. Not yiktol. Vekatar. Vekatar. Aya is a katal form. But we've got all of these incompleted tense verbs like do it, do it. Okay, I did. I kind of skipped over this first one here, utnu, but it's the same thing we saw earlier with kahu. Vowel there, u right there. It's an imperative. So we've got imperative. We've got imperative. We've got a katal. That doesn't make sense. It needs to be incomplete. Ah, oh, there's a vav in front. That flips the tense. Mm -hmm. Vekatal, future. And it shall be Ha'ish, the man, Asher Yivchar Adonai, that the Lord chooses, understood him, which refers back to the man, the man whom the Lord chooses, who Hakadosh, he, the holy. It's like there should be a verb there. Oh, okay. Is he is? Well, it's going to be future tense because of the vekatal. So let's mm -hmm. say he will be or shall be Hakadosh, the one that the Lord picks. He shall be holy. Rav lachem bnei Levi. So this is kind of uh, poetic justice because this is pretty much what. Korach and his posse was telling Moses and Aaron, and now Moses and Aaron is flipping it and sticking it to them. Too much for you all, sons of Levi. Vayomer Moshe, and Moses said, El Korach, unto Korach, Shim'u na Bnei Levi. What does that word na tell me about this verb? Imperative. Very good. This is an imperative. Imperative. You can write the word imperative. There we go. This is an imperative, but the word na will show up next to what kinds of words of which an imperative is a subset. Mm -hmm. Volatives. Volatives. Showing Volatives. Will, showing will or desire. Right? In the second person, we call it an imperative. What do we call it in the third person? We just saw it with Yoda. Joseph. Joseph. And what do we call it in the first person? I or we? Cohortative. That's right. So all three of these forms show volition, desire, will. In first person, we say, let me or let us do something. In second person, you say, do it. And in third person, you say, let him or let her do such and such. Let her do this or that. Good. So that na only shows up with volatives. So that means we know that must be one of them, and we have eyes, and we have a brain, so we know that this is an imperative, 
Shimu, here, I pray you, I tell you, I'm a particle of entreaty. B'nai Levi, sons of Levi. Okay, what else is Moses going to say? Mm -hmm. uh, Cheryl, would you like to read this? Okay. Han'at Michem, Michem, Ki Hivdil, Elohe Israel, Etchem, Meedat Israel, Le Hakriv, Etchem, Elav, Lavor. לעבוד, לעבוד, mm -hmm. לעבוד את עבודת משכן ארנאי ולעמוד לפני העדה לשרתם. לשרתם? Is this an audible or silent שווה? שרת, לשרתם. Uh, no, 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 it's an audible schwa or it's a silent schwa. What are the ramifications of those two possibilities? Suppose it's a silent schwa, then what? It's a long syllable and it's pronounced. If it's a silent schwa, yeah, remember silent schwa letters. closes a syllable, so it's a closed syllable, mm -hmm. which means I'm it has stressed. to have what kind? Yeah, and it's unstressed, so that means it needs what kind of a vowel, long or short? Normally, it's short. Katan. Let's ask Rouse. Who's Rouse? He's the rule of unstressed syllables. He says that in closed syllables, you're supposed to have short vowels, and in open syllables, you're supposed to have long, long vowels. Long. All right. So a short vowel that looks like this is called a Kamatskatan, which is a short vowel sound. And the long mm -hmm. vowel, which looks identical, is uh, it's a regular uh, kamats, which is a long uh, vowel sound. That's the frustrating kamats. thing about the Masoretic scribes is they used the same symbol for two different vowels, didn't they? Well, mm -hmm. the story is a little bit more sorted than that because turns out that this had more of an aw <laughs> sound and this had more of an o oh sound. Ooh. So they basically had the same sound and it was later on that the Sephardic dialect turned this into ah. So it's actually not something that the Masoretic scribes did. Yeah. It's something that happened later on. But nevertheless, if this is a closed, so if this is a silent schwa and therefore a closed syllable, it means we have a kamatz katan, which means it would be pronounced leshotam. Now, option two. What if it is a uh, an audible schwa? Well, audible schwas open or start a syllable, which means this will be an open syllable and therefore a long a uh, kamatz. Those are your two options, right? Yeah. Which one, makes, which one makes more sense is going to be the next question. And does anyone know this route? Asharat. To serve. To serve. Anybody know the modern Hebrew word sherutim? Yes, Service, I hear that. Services. services. Literally, it means the services, but if you oh. read between the lines, it means toilets. Oh, so, <laughs> ah, really? The services, exactly. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I think uh, I actually was <clears throat> telling a, 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 a student of mine recently about this, so it's kind of funny. Anyway, uh, there are government agencies that have the word sherut in them because they are ministries or services. Uh, but the point being is that the verb 
is a PL verb. The verb, uh, the verbal root shin resh tav shows up in the PL. Now, armed with that information, is this a silent or audible schwa? PL. That's a hard question. No, it's not. Think about PL. It's what is the not the Kamatskatan. It's not the Kamatskatan. Then it's pronounced Lishtaritam. Very good. Lishtaritam. Lishtaritam. Now, how did you know that? Well, let's look at another. <laughs> let's look at another Help. verb. Okay. Oh, and let's Help. think of um, Lidabram. Okay. Le da b ram. This has the same yeah, pattern yeah. that this should have. What's the difference? Um, kamatz. Dagesh. Oh we yeah. We can't put the p l dagesh into the resh, and that causes yeah. the preceding vowel to to compensate. <laughs> That's the reason mm. that it's an a vowel. That's the reason it's a p l. Ah, that did not take the dagesh. Le mm. So we've got am at the end, which is a pronominal suffix. Ah. We've got lamed at the front, which is a preposition. This bit here in the middle is an infinitive construct to do something, to serve, minister, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. To minister them or to minister mm -hmm. unto them, to serve them. Hi, yi, yi. Hi, is right. <laughs> there is magic. <laughs> Help. All right. Are there any questions on here or can I move on to the next verse? Oh, it's a medium sized verse. Who's up? I can read. Go ahead, Thomas. Okay. Vaya crève au terre de et col. Very good. Is this an audible schwa or a silent schwa? Uh, 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 sorry, otecha. Okay, no, 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 don't stress it. No, 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 no. Yes, yes, yes. Never take a stress. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Otcha. Otcha. Yes, because it's a long vowel O. Long vowel. Long vowel O. Exactly. <laughs> this is an unstressed long <laughs> vowel. It should be in an open syllable. Yeah. Mm. Which means that's the end of the syllable. This starts the syllable. Therefore, it is audible. Mm. Otcha. Let me read through one time. Vaya krev. Otcha. Veet kol. Achecha vene levi itach uvi kashtem gam kehuna. What binyan is this? Vayakrev? Very interesting. All right, well, let's start with something easier. What form is this word? Vai. Vayikto. Must be a vayikto. There's a vav patach dagesh. It must be a vayikto. Good. So that means we've got a yikto prefix here. Yod, saying that he is the subject, and that's fine. And he's here. Mm -hmm. Because of the patach under mm -hmm. the yikto letter, that tells you it's he field. Yeah. Wait a second. I thought that he feel is supposed to have a chiric yod right here. <clears throat> Where's the chiric yod? It's okay. missing. Bonus points to anyone who can remember that fancy word when a verb is crushed down to something shorter. It is simulated. Not that one. No. Nope. Oh, um... This fancy word apocopated mm. means that you apocopated. lost your you lost your mater lectionis vowel. 
Ah. We talked about how that happens in Jussive forms. Mm -hmm. Well, it turns out it also likes to happen in Vyictal forms. This yod, the Hyric yod, the yod is a mater lectionis. It's gone. It apocopated. Mm -hmm. Vyictals will do that. How about this one right here? Va yik. Hmm. Hmm? Va yik. Uh, what? Yeah. What is happening? Va yik. What does mm. that mean? I wonder if it comes from va yik ne. And it lost the vowel. Because of the pocketed, mm -hmm. because of the vayiktol. Vayikne mm. comes from yikne, to buy, to either buy, possess, own. Vayiktol likes to apocopate, so it loses that final hey. Vayikin is what's mm. left. How frustrating. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it apocopated. Okay, vayakrev, and he brought near. Otcha, you, singular. Ve'et kol achecha, and all of your brothers. Brothers. Mm -hmm. Vnei Levi itach, the sons of Levi with you. Is this masculine or feminine? Normally feminine. Normally feminine. Is this vowel here normal? Normally not. Normally not. So there's your problem, right? It should yes. be itcha. Itcha. But this is a an etnachta and a halfway point of the verse. Ah, Puzzle. You said it. Yeah. Puzzle, no. which means that the preceding vowel gets stressed. Ah. You can't stress a schwa. So the mm. original vowel comes back, and now we've got a long, unstressed syllable, which drops to a schwa. Oh. So itach is the 2ms pausal form with Mama. you. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. You'll see the same thing happen from bacha turning into pausal form. Bach, masculine singular. You'll see the same thing with lcha. What will it be in the pausal form? Lach, 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 lach. That is the reason sometimes I read that and I, I uh, ask me. Why is this a feminine? Why is it a feminine? Uh, it's not. Oh. It ha it's a it's a pausal form. Look at the cantillation mark above yeah. or next to it, and you'll see. I... Oh, it's a yes. pausal form. <laughs> I don't understand. Uvikashtem. All right, let's parse this bad boy out. We need to know the root. We need to know the form. We need to know the uh, binyan. And we need to know the person gender number. If you can get these three, these four things down, then you pretty well parsed it. Help me out. What are they? It's sick. Oh. Uh, Bakash. There you go. Bakash. It's actually, Bike I would say Bikesh, but whatever. Bet. Yeah. Um, form. It has a katal suffix. So, what form is it? Vekatal. Vekatal. That's it. It has to be an incompleted verb with a katal suffix. What is the suffix? Yes, the Tem is the suffix. You all. Yeah. And the suffix was, uh, sorry, prefix was bait. Oh, uh, Vekatal has a vav at the front. There it is. Yeah. It, it turned uh, yeah, yes. Oh, sorry. Bakash. Bakash is a uh, root. Uh, sorry, sorry. Mm -hmm. I forgot. Good, 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 good. Bakash or Bikesh is the yeah, root. Yeah. All right, Binyan. Bikesh. Uh, Nifal. 
It's tempting to say Nifo because uh -huh. of the E-ah, isn't it? Or he feel. He feel. Yeah. Let's start with the second root letter. Strong Dagesh. Hmm. Second root letter, Strong Dagesh. That tells you it's going to be a member of the double Binyanin. P-L, P-R, P-L. Whereas in a Nifo, the first letter gets a Dagesh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's not Nifo. P L. Okay, it's it is P L and it is not hit P L. It's there's it's not hit P L because we don't have a separate we don't have a separate uh, syllable out front. Mm -hmm. But also hit P L oh, okay. in the Katal should have a hit at the front. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But it is P L P L. Mm -hmm. Here, here, mm -hmm. the gesh there. This vowel mm -hmm. uh, underneath the kuf changes. Sometimes it's a segel, sometimes it's a tsere, sometimes it's a patach, sometimes it goes to shva. You can't rely on it. Mm. This chirik and dagesh, that's all you need. All right, and then lastly, at, at, let's see, PL, we need person, gender, number. Two MP. Two MP. Two MP because of the tem mm. suffix. And you all will translation bavakasha. To I did that on purpose. Please. You guys know the, the modern Hebrew word bavakasha. Thank you. Uh, what I need, uh, I don't know the same root. Um, it's, it's, it's to seek or desire. Yeah. And bavakasha would mean in seeking or desiring. Yeah. So we'll translate it as either please or please. you're welcome. Welcome. It is sought. It is desired. I relish the yeah. possibility to serve you, sort of a thing. Yeah. yeah. Right? yeah. Be cash is to seek. Bavakasha is in the act of seeking. Please or ah. you're welcome. Very, very common modern Hebrew word. Uvikashtem, and you all shall seek gam, or and you all are seeking, do seek gam kehuna, who is a kohen. Oh, a priest. A priest. So what is kehuna? Priesthood. Apparently, it's the priesthood. You'll notice that means a, many priests. It's a system of of a priestly order. So the whole. Oh. The hood right here is kind of like Ooh. an umbrella that encompasses all things related to being a priest. What is motherhood? <clears throat> all things related to being a mother. What is widowhood? All things related to being mm -hmm. a widow. So this hood is sort of like an abstract suffix in English. And this, this feminine suffix here will tend to do the same thing. Abstraction. Yay. What is abstraction? It's 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 like the opposite of something being concrete. Um, I've got, yes. um, you know, I've got a house that's concrete, but the housing market or the housing industry or the 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 housing, I don't know, something that's that's usually composed of multiple concrete mm -hmm. parts. Mm -hmm. That's more of an abstraction. That's going to have a, a feminine ending to it. Um, uh, it's a passive form too, no, no. Keuna. It's the same form, whether it's in pausal or not. It appears the same. It should be okay. in pausal it's form. It's just there's no difference in this word. There's no difference. All right. Armed with that information, please tell me what is a dog? Fish. 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 What is daga? Um. Many fishes? Fishing. Fishing. Or fishing. Who said many fishes? That's it. That's okay. me. Mm -hmm. So it's a collection. This is, turns out in English, there the plural for fish is fish, uh, correct? Yeah, no, mm -hmm. many. <laughs> in English, there is the word, the word does exist, fishes, uh, but mm -hmm. with a very specific meaning. It's when you mm -hmm. have a collection of different kinds of fish in mm -hmm. one uh, defined area. So there are many fishes in the sea, but you have a bowl full of 10 fish. So daga. Daga. This is a feminine uh, vowel letter. Hey. 
It's not a consonant. It's a daga. Daga. Mm -hmm. Okay. Fishes. Okay. Next verse. Ooh, we have a Kathif Kere. Who's the next reader? Jesse, you see you still see I see you still have your hand up. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Al Adonai ve Aharon Mahu ki Tilonu Tilinu Alav. Very good. Um, what is Katif Kere? So a little thing right here, Kare. That's supposed to be a Kuf, or sorry, Q R E Kare, uh, with a little schwa under it. Th imagine putting a schwa under there. Okay. Kativ and Kare. Uh, what's the root of Kativ? Can anyone imagine? It's so right. Mm -hmm. That which is ah. And Kare is gelesen uh, to to read. Mm -hmm. That which is With red. With exactly. yes, yes, yes. Ah, cool. A, I think there's a yield right there. Ah, right, so this is what's actually mm -hmm. written, but this is how ah. we're supposed to read it, according cool. to the scribes. Mm. What's the main difference? That's what I was about to say. One is red and one isn't. Mm -hmm. the, so apparently a, an original vav is in the text, but by the time the scribes are writing their tradition down, they've already changed it to a yod. So they're telling us, well, read it this mm -hmm. way. That word doesn't exist anymore because so it's the last it. word. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Okay, uh, that's the same like uh, he on and he. Yeah. So the one that the one yes. that's inside the brackets is the one that we don't read. Correct. This is what's written. I hate crossing mm -hmm. it out because it's what's mm -hmm. actually written, and mm -hmm. this right here is what we're supposed to read it as. Mm -hmm. Um. So this okay. begs the this begs the question. What is the root of uh, Talinu? Oh, ay, ay, ay. Um, Stagish. Tell you what, I'll give you a I'll give you a hint by showing you this root in the hit pa'el. Hit nen. Mm. Does anyone want to complain about this word? I hear that, but I don't know what it is. Um, In modern Hebrew, hitlonen is to complain. Uh, mm. uh, tluna, tluna is a complaint. Ah. Here we've got talinu. This is not from the root. Lalin or uh, lean or lun. Does anyone remember the root lean or lun? Uh, I read that. I don't know at that moment. Okay, you can take a night no. to sleep on it. No. Oh, come on. That was an excellent hint. Take a night to sleep on it. Um, yeah. To lodge. He lodged. He stayed the night. Mm hmm. So lalin, like this, is he uh, is to lodge, and that's from lamed yod nun, originally lamed vav nun. That is not the root of this. That dagesh in the lamed tells you about the missing nun. Lamed nun nun, hit lo nun. Okay, I haven't read it yet, have I? Lachen ata vechol adatcha. Even though that's an audible shva, please do not put the stress on it. Adatcha pano adim al Adonai vaaharon mahu ki talinu alav. All right, should we try to parse this thing out then?
Hmm. Well, let's start with the easy stuff. Does it have a Katal suffix or a Yiktol prefix? No. Yes. Yeah. Yiktol. What what Yiktol so, prefix does it have? Uh, yeah. person or third, third person. Right. Plural. Right. Tav and U. Mm. What binyan is it with a patach under that yikto prefix? Um, hefil. Very good. That's hefil. And this right here confirms that it's hefil. Mm. Mm. Ironically, in the kativ, we don't get that, but in the kare, we do. So it is hefil. And now we know the root is. Lamed nun nun. Lamed nun nun. <sighs> Lamed nun nun. Oh. It's a frustrating root. Yeah, very, very. It's a very frustrating root <laughs> because the second nun looks like it's back assimilating into the Lamed Seda mm Gesh. -hmm. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It does happen. It does exist in the Bible. Here's an example of it. It does happen in other places where you get this sort of back assimilation. Um, uh, here's another one. Vayidal. Vayidal. Nadal. Uh, hang on a second. Hang on, hang on. Vayidal. Okay. In, I think it's actually a patah. Vaidal. In, is it a vayiktol? Yes. Yes. And, uh, yep. 3ms. Yeah. And, uh, Binyan is going to be the hard part here because it looks almost like a nifal. E a. <laughs> Except that it's supposed to be e a, and there should be a third root letter. Yes. Yes. What's happening is that the root is dalit lamed lamed. Ah, yes. And the second lamed has back assimilated into the first. Got it. Okay. Looks like our time is about out. My wife is asking, is trying to contact me. Uh, okay, so here is another example where the back assimilation happens. This is a regular kal binyan, uh. such as yik rav, like that, except that the resh mm -hmm. back assimilates, and we end up with, you know, as it were, yik kav. So here's your Yo, uh, chirik, there's your patach. This back assimilates. You're left with a kuf and a bet. I, I, I just understand that this does not exist in Hebrew. This particular yeah. root, it's a strong root. You should get all three root letters. But as far as this one goes, <laughs> it should have oh, been. Right. And honestly, that's what I should have done to begin with. So let me start over. Let's use an actual irregular root. Yod, dalit, mm. lamed, lamed should have been yid, lal. Why an A vowel? Because it's a state of being. To be poor. You ever mm -hmm. heard of the word dal? To be poor. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yidlal. That's kind of hard to say. Yidlal, yidlal, yidal. Almost flows off the tongue easier. So apparently that's what happened. Lamed went back as a strong dagesh. Disappears. So now we get Yidal. This patach kind of takes over. Yidal instead of Yidlal. Mm -hmm. Frustrating stuff. When those yeah. pesky root letters, those weak root letters go missing. Well, I wish we could have gotten all the way to uh, the fun part of the story where the, where the earth swallows up Korach, but we did not get there. I'm so sorry. I highly encourage you to continue reading through this parasha until you get to that part. It's fascinating. And if you want to help continue to make heat hungry for Hebrew possible, here's how you can support. And uh, I look forward to seeing you all next week. Thank you. 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 Thank you.